Hi, I'm Carol O'Mara. I'm the horticulture entomologist with Colorado State University here in Boulder County. Today we're going to be learning about starting seeds. This is the first of a three-part series on how to get your own plants growing in your back room. If you want to start your own seeds from home, what you're going to do is open up a wide variety of food choices for your family and yourself. And all you need really is a little bit of space, a little bit of water, and some lights to do the trick. But there are a few other things that we can show you. Some of the things that you're going to be shopping for, some of the things you're going to be shopping for are, of course, going to be your seed packets. You definitely want to pick uh, new seeds, the ones that have the date on the back of them, packaged for 2010. You want to make sure that you have a sterile seed starting mix. This is not soil. You don't go out and dig your uh, soil out of the garden. What this is, is a combination of peat moss, perlite, or vermiculite, and so it doesn't have any soil in it, and this keeps disease organisms away from your little seedlings. You can make this at home if you'd like to, if you have some compost that you'd like to sterilize. All you have to do is take your compost and lay it on a cookie sheet and bake it in the oven for about oh, three hours at approximately 200 degrees. But if you do this, I want you to beware, this stuff really stinks when it's baking. So you want to make sure you pick the right time, like when you have house guests you want to get rid of, that's the perfect time for going ahead to sterilizing your compost. The next things you're going to be looking at is maybe some capillary matting. This will help water your seedlings as you're um, growing them out so that you don't have to remember to water them every day. This is a soft mat. It's uh, kind of a plastic weave and the roots just dig right into it. It soaks the water up and provides water directly where the plants need it. A sturdy tray is important. You can use these plastic ones that you find at the store. They come often with a little insert and they have a lot of these small pelleted um, jiffy pellets that you can go ahead and add to water and it swells up and you plant your little seeds in there. The nice thing about these trays is they come with this clear humidity tent and it fits right over the top as the seeds are germinating and humidity will help those seeds come up much faster. Other things that you might want to look for when you're out shopping besides the seeds and the, the trays is um, a seedling mat. This is often used to heat the seeds from below gently, it adds about 10 to 20 degrees to the temperature of the room and your seedlings will germinate pretty much in half the time. When you're working with peppers that take a little bit longer to germinate than say your tomato plants, the seedling mat really is helpful for getting those a jump start and up and growing at the same time as your tomatoes. Um, these are not necessarily just the heating pads that you can use on your body. Remember, you're going to be pouring water on this on a regular basis, so make sure you use one that is designed to go under plants and not uh, snuggled up against your body. Lights are very important for this process. You um, want to go ahead and get something that will give the plants a broad spectrum of light. So you need from the blue spectrum through the red spectrum, you can do this with a grow light. They cost quite a bit of money. You can spend about $40 per bulb on them, or you can save your pennies for what really matters, which are the plants, and you can do this the inexpensive way. Just get yourself a shop light set up and get one cool blue light and one warm light, put them together over your seeds, and you have a fairly inexpensive light set up. A timer for your light is also really helpful. Your seeds are going to need about 14 to 16 hours of sunlight and instead of you having to remember to get up early in the morning to turn them on and shut them off at night, if you have a timer to do this for you, you're going to be really, really happy about that. To suspend the lights above the seeds, you really want to look at some bungee cords or perhaps some chains. The lights are going to have to move as the seedlings grow so you can keep the lights at approximately three inches above the plants at all time. So you want a mechanism that will raise and lower pretty quickly. Lastly, you're going to be looking at some fertilizer. The type of fertilizer you use on these plants is up to you, but what you want to remember is the seedlings are going to come up. They're going to then put on one or two sets of true leaves, and at that point, that's when you give them the first shot of fertilizer. Altogether, the cost of this setup is going to cost you around, oh, $80 or so for your budget. 
But if you can understand that some of this you're buying to use year after year, things like the seedling mats and the lights and the light timer that are going to run you pretty much half of that $80, these things you're going to use for several years. So that's an investment that pays out over time. Whereas the rest of these things, the trays, the soil, maybe some of the seeds obviously, you're going to be investing in every single year. But once you have all of this equipment together, you're ready to start starting seeds.